Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Won Sung Lee. Um, I'm an AI research engineer at Offstage. Offstage is one of the fastest growing AI startup companies in South Korea. Uh, we are developing an enterprise AI solution named AI Pack for the successful adoption of AI technology for customers' businesses. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to briefly introduce our research, Contrastive Learning for Knowledge Tracing. Uh, this is a joint work with Ice Cream Edu, the company providing intelligent tutoring systems for K-12 students in South Korea. So, okay. so first of all, for those, for those unfamiliar with the knowledge tracing task, uh, I will briefly explain what knowledge tracing is and how it works. Knowledge tracing is one of the fundamental tasks in intelligent tutoring systems. Given a learning history of student, knowledge tracing estimates student knowledge states as shown in the series of radar charts here. Uh, in our discussion, knowledge states represent student, student proficiencies for particular knowledge concepts, for example, equality, inequality, and so on. The main purposes of knowledge tracing are the following. First, uh, enabling adaptive behavior of the instructional policy. Based on the estimated knowledge state, we can utilize it to recommend personalized learning materials and provide some adaptive, adaptive learning passes uh, tailored to individual students. And second, displaying to students a representation of their estimated performance. This is able to promote metacognitive abilities of learners and also increase learner trust in the system. Third, uh, through the knowledge tracing test, we can derive some useful insights that are interpretable and actionable for both students and tutors. But let me describe the knowledge tracing test more formally. As shown in the diagram, knowledge tracing model, a knowledge tracing model receives the learning history up to time step t, and the next question, QT plus one, as input. And the model predicts the probability that the student will answer the next question correctly. So the inputs are S1 from T here, and the next question, QT plus one, where each ST, which are an interaction, is consists of question and response at time step T. So the output of the knowledge tracing model is the probability of getting the next question correctly, which is R half T plus one. Through this formulation, a knowledge tracing model can keep track of students evolving knowledge states over time. And the estimated knowledge states can be used in various downstream applications in ITS. Uh, this formulation is quite similar to sequential recommendation test or named entity recognition in NLP, but the main difference is that at each time step, the next question is given, then knowledge tracing performs just binary classification to predict the probability of getting a correct answer. Uh, there are several challenges in knowledge tracing tests, uh, complexity, sparsity, and reliability. To deal with those challenges, we propose a contrastive learning framework for knowledge tracing, for short, CL4KT. We carefully designed the components of CL4KT, such as model architectures, data augmentation method, and hard negatives to reflect the unique characteristics of the, the education domain. The figure on the right uh, shows the key idea behind our model. We obtain semantically similar examples of learning history through data augmentation and dissimilar example uh, through hard negatives or in batch negatives. After that, contrastive learning promotes positive pairs to be pulled closer together and negative pairs to be repelled in the representation, representation space. Uh, this process is similar to the idea of triplet loss in the figure on the right. So for a, better, for a better understanding of the idea of contrastive learning, which is a, which is a special branch of self supervised learning, I will show you a famous illustration of SimClear. Uh, contrastive learning describes the idea of training models to have high similarity in their representation between positive pairs. 
and inversely for negative pairs using a contrast loss. In the figure on the right, you can see that we applied this idea to student learning history to, in order to make useful self-supervised signals and in order to handle data sparsity. Uh, we, we assume that after some proper data augmentation, each student proficiency repre represented by the uh, uh, augmented learning history is still similar to before. So this, this becomes a positive example. In contrast, when we reverse responses, uh, zero to one or one to zero, uh, this augmentation leads to uh, semantically different learning histories. Uh, for example, if we reverse all response variables as shown here, uh, the student proficiency represented by the, by the changed learning history uh, can be totally different from the, from the original one. Long story short, we make use of those examples as hard negatives to further improve the performance of contrastive learning. So let me show the diagrams for the model architectures of CL4KT. As we've seen before, in the contrastive learning part, uh, data augmentation is applied to a learning history to generate correlated views of the original one, which are S plus one and S plus two. Then these augmented learning histories are fed into question and interaction encoders, respectively. So after that, we can obtain uh, question level representations, GQ, and interaction level representation, ZS. Uh, next, for each level, we calculate the similarity between the representations of two augmented views here. Finally, we use the cross entropy laws to make contrast laws for questions and interactions, respectively. For the response prediction part, which is our primary task, we use original data, uh, sorry, we use original data without data augmentation to uh, given a learning history and the uh, next question, we perform a typical knowledge tracing task. After getting question representation HQ and interaction representation HS, we feed them into knowledge retrieval module to get finer knowledge representation and predict the response. Uh, given the ground truth, a ground truth response, we can calculate the response prediction loss here. Uh, what I want to highlight is that the question and interaction encoders are shared across both contrastive learning part and response prediction part. Also, the re representations of the augmented history denoted by Z are actually obtained by a pooling operation like average or mixed pooling. For contrastive learning as our pretext task, we employ bidirectional self encoders. Uh, to summarize the entire context of a learning history. Uh, from, from both directions, which is similar to uh, bot for REC. For response prediction, our primary task, we use a causal mask to prevent positions from attending subsequent positions, as in the original transformer decoder, which also avoids future information leakage. For the knowledge retrieval module, uh, query, key, and values are the following, uh, which is, which is equ equivalent formulation of to the typical knowledge tracing model like attentive knowledge tracing, something like that. And uh, the, the, the objective function is the combination of response prediction and contrast, uh, sorry. The final objective function is the combination of response prediction loss and the contrastive loss. The hyperparameter lambda controls the influence of self-supervised learning signals. Uh, this page is, describes the idea of augmentation method that we used in this paper. With data augmentation method tailored to knowledge tracing tasks, we hypothesized that uh, even, even if we augmented the original learning history, the proficiency represented by that remains similar to before. Our model utilizes several data augmentation together to produce correlated views of the student's learning history. Next, I'm gonna describe each augmentation method in more detail. First, question mask, uh, which is inspired by masked language models such as BERT. Uh, this replaces a portion of questions with a mask token without changing their responses. 
this promotes to estimate missing context by denoising the masked learning history. The second method is interaction prop. Uh, this kind of random cropping is commonly used technique to create a ran random, random subset of original data in computer vision or natural language processing. The interaction prop uh, extract a subsequence from the original history. The crop data can help our model generalize better by providing a local view of data. Uh, third one, the third one is interaction permute. Uh, this data augmentation reorders interaction in a uh, subsequence of the original history. We assume that the student knowledge states represented by an interaction sequence remain similar, even if the even if the order within the subsequence is changed. For example, a student who has mastered a particular knowledge concept uh, will she, uh, she will be able to solve the problems uh, relevant to the concept, regardless of the order of the problems. The first one, question replace. This converts some questions to easier or easier uh, easier question if the response is correct, or uh, to more difficult question otherwise, without changing uh, their responses. We assume that uh, a, we assume that a student who has mastered complex higher level concepts is more likely to answer the simple lower level concepts correctly, and vice versa. For example, a student who has mastered the concept of trigonometric functions can easily solve addition and subtraction questions and vice versa. What I want to, what I want to highlight is that this kind of custom augmentation doesn't significantly change the student proficiency. Uh, aside from the data augmentation method for positive pairs, we also introduce hard negative samples by changing their responses in the learning history. To generate hard negatives, we select a portion of interactions and reverse their responses. The idea behind that changing responses is not beneficial in terms of making positive pairs. We guess the reason why is that these changes in binary response variable result in a substantial semantic difference in terms of known states. Uh, to validate our model, we used six benchmark data sets and uh, we used the uh, evaluation metrics. Uh, uh, we used AUC and RMSC as our evaluation metrics, which are both are widely used in this field. Uh, in terms of overall performance, we compared our model to several baselines, including uh, traditional models, IRT, PFA, and uh, only deep learning model, deep knowledge tracing, and uh, DKVMN, and recently published self authentic models such as SAKT and AKT. Uh, the research shows that our model consistently outperforms other baselines. Uh, from the previous result, a natural question can arise. So which components of CR4KT play an important role in performance? To answer that, uh, this shows the shows the ovulation study of our model. In order to verify the impact of each component, we compare CR4KT with six, vari with six variants, consisting of one without bidirectional encoders, one without each augmentation method, and one without hard negative samples. This figure shows the following interesting observations. First, regarding data augmentation method, Removing each augmentation method result in the performance loss, which is empirical evidence for the effectiveness of using multiple augmentation methods together. This result is consistent with previous work, seem clear. And second, one without bidirectional encoders uh, suffers from performance deterioration, which means the importance of considering bidirectional context in learning representations for knowledge tracing. Lastly, one without hard negatives also suffers from a performance drop, which shows that there exist additional benefits of using hard negative samples. Uh, as knowledge tracing has been applied in various downstream applications in ITS, it has become more critical to provide, pr provide reliability of knowledge tracing models. To analyze the reliability, we provide a calibration plot. 
Visualizing the calibration of knowledge tracing models allows us to detect and possibly correct for systematic bias before they propagate into downstream application. Uh, let's, let's imagine what if we naively use a knowledge tracing model without calibration? Well, this may lead to limited utility in downstream application. In other words, uncalibrated models might result in biased instructional policies, for example. As shown in this figure, the baseline AKT uh, underestimates learners when the probability of correct answer is low. On the other hand, CL for KT is well calibrated and does not indicate any severe biases, which means that CL for KT is more reliable than the baseline. Uh, in summary, CL4KT can capture more effective representations of knowledge states, improving learners' performance prediction. As academic and industrial interest in AI for education increases, a uh, vast amount of learning data is being collected and analyzed. So we do believe that self-supervised learning approaches such as CL4KT, which find useful information from inherent patterns of data itself, can have a broad, imp broad impact on technology to innovate teaching and learning practices. So that's, that's the end of my question. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for the presentation. Does anyone have questions? Maybe we'll wait for a little bit um, for anyone to type in their question or just to uh, um, come on audio. Uh, I have a quick question. When you say um, you predict these responses and for hard negative, you actually reverse the responses. Um, does that mean all of the questions are, um, are, are binary like response uh, okay. questions or is it, are they, multiple choice questions? Uh, in knowledge tracing formulation, uh, it, it considers only the correct or wrong. So when we, so binary variables, so. Got it. Okay, so yeah. it's like if the, it, so it doesn't matter, say, you know, if, um, if it's a, if I'm getting kind of close to a question, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no yeah, yeah, yeah. partial credit that you would consider. It's just yeah, yes yeah. or there's no. There's a kind of limitation that you pointed out. Yeah, yeah. So some some work has proposed for to to handle that kind of issue like multiple questions and the closeness of the answers. There mm -hmm. are some work. Mm -hmm.